The following is a rebroadcast of TV 50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. TV 50 Sports with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. From Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham, featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from around New England. Gonna split it. Look at this. Yes! Oh, oh, wow! <laughs> right in the oh. pocket. Oh, there was yeah. never a doubt about that one. Look at ball. Ball. Now your host for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Sandy's Bowling Lanes and Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We are ready to go with week number four, the semifinal round, if you will, of this uh, ladder championship, and we've had some pretty exciting matches these last couple of weeks. Haven't been high-scoring matches, but they've been exciting going right, last two weeks, going right down the last box, and last week uh, the magic wasn't there for Ronnie Root. Billy Koffel knocked them off, and Billy's trying to make it two in a row today. All right, let's meet the two bowlers. First of all, uh, our number two seed uh, making his first appearance on the program from Nashua, Scott Richardson. Yeah, Scott making his first appearance as all the bowlers are and uh, Scott carries an average of 113 high triple of 424 and he qualified for the show with a 642 five string total and he threw a strike in that warm-up and I'm sure he'd like to have saved it but uh, that's the way it goes I know you can't count those you know <laughs> <laughs> all right and coming back for his second week after eking out a two-pin victory last week against uh, Ron Root 347 to 345 looking for two in a row is Bill Koffel you know, he had a rough start last week too 14 boxes before he got his first mark but kept plugging away using that third ball to pin and got a big mark, the last box, the last string with eight on it to finally beat, uh, uh, who was it, Ebola? Uh, Ron Root. Ron Root, that's what I said at the beginning. How quick they forget. <laughs> 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 All right, we've got $30 in the bonus ball jackpot coming up later on in the show, but we're going to get this match underway between Bill Caulfield and Scott Richardson right after we take this break. Don't go away. Well, I hope everybody had a happy St. Patrick's Day during the week, and here we go with our fourth week of this five-week ladder championship. Number two seed Scott Richardson will be the uh, opponent this time for Bill Koffold, who finally knocked off Ron Root after Ron had won the first two weeks of the series. But last week, well, it, it was just an unusual match. 347 to 345, Bill Koffold uh, having to sweat it out the last box, and uh, Ron Root unable to come up with the 18 pins that he needed in the last two boxes to win it. He ended up with 15 and uh, lost by two. So that sets us up where we are now. Scott Richardson against Bill Koffold, and Scott will start us off here on lane 32, which is the lane, by the way, that he rolled that strike in the warm-up. And <laughs> after, he, after he rolled it, he turned around as if to say, well, why now? But he looked like he was rolling pretty well in the warm-up. So. Well, like I said, this is not easy in front of the cameras and the lights, but... Uh Last week you saw Billy Koffold. Took him a long time to get that first mark, and just such a relief <laughs> to get the first one. And a nine box for Scott to start it out. Scott from Nashua. And works at Sanders as a chemical technician. Oh, just missed having that six fall into the five for the strike. But a good chance for his first mark. And he's covered it. Nice shot. <laughs> and now Bill Koffold, who has that extreme right to left angled delivery. Really puts a lot of spin on the ball and really breaks sharp at the end. When he finally got his first mark in the 15th box of last week's match, he converted a half Worcester. That's right. <laughs> Carol Downey working the big scoreboard as usual. Dennis Noel is our lob line judge. And a real big crowd again here to watch our taping. Peter Hovenesian is our replay official. 
<laughs> it just what? takes me a while to sink in. Oh yeah, replay official, yeah. People don't know the background of that, but a few weeks ago we had to go to the instant replay to determine whether uh, a triple piece of wood was actually a triple piece of wood and whether the pin was good that was knocked down and oh, so forth and so on. It wasn't any good. It was interesting. Big nine fill on the mark for Scott Richardson, and he's Dave off to an early Vasquez. lead. Come to the counter, please. Dave Vasquez. Eight pin with all kinds of lumber out in front. Well, oh, what about that? Wow. Ooh. Boy, I hope he got that on replay. Two pieces of wood out in front. Never touched that piece. And completely went around the ball and everything. Never covered the pin. Here's the replay. Look at that. Wow. That's Candlepin Bowling. $100 to the runner-up of this show for third place overall in the ladder. In addition to a copy of Jim Fairhurst's book, The Light Side of Candlepin Bowling, provided to us by John Grapponi Ford in Concord, and also the runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, Mass. The winner, of course, moves on to go for the big check next week against our number one seed, Dean DeRocher, out of Manchester. Take a look over the shoulder of Bill Koffel, and let's see what will happen with the seven pin. It'll stay there, seven, eight, nine. Huh. Well, the only thing I see is the eight pin and the piece of wood at the same time. Hopefully you can snap it off the, the wall. And again, slow start for Billy Caulfield. And we remarked about the last few weeks, the winner of the show opened up with a 94 game. <laughs> so everyone's shooting for 94. <laughs> Not hardly. There's a strike. Yeah. Looked like he's going to be left with a three and the seven. Three went down and finally the seven. And doesn't take Billy quite as long this week to get his first mark, and it's a big one. And I think, am I correct in saying that that's the first strike? He didn't get any strikes last week. They're all spares. And this week his first mark is his first strike. And that doesn't happen very often here on Stars and Strikes, that a guy will go through a full show without getting at least one strike. So, Scott, you heard it here first. If anyone doesn't put the jinx on, you was Doug that said it, and you haven't got a strike yet. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's going through these bowlers' minds being... Well, of course, Billy's got a week under his belt in front of the lights, but Scott hasn't, and there. I'm off the hook. You're off the hook, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick strike, too, crossing over in the one-two pocket. I'll go down for the strike. This is on a strike for Billy Koffold, and he'll have a spare leave, too. Billy's going to leave any pin standing. He'd much rather have him on the left side of the lane because of that hook he throws. Right there for the spare. Shot. Takes the lead. that four to go and it does three six and ten seven fill on the spear interesting to see if maybe he'll play the wood here nope no right on the pin it's a nice most, shot by bill most of these guys will go directly at the pin if they have a chance but that wood was in a pretty favorable spot i guess it all boils down to how much confidence you have at the time that shot arises and if i missed a couple object pins and you know losing a little bit of confidence then maybe i'll take the wood because five boxes from now, I forgot I played the wood. I just see the mark mm, up there. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> a good break there, one, nine, and ten. And some real helpful wood there. Oh, no. Right around that ten pin.
Good ball. Solid seven pin. And he's got some problems again with this wood. Well, the second piece, you know, the red line, ball off the left side wall into the pin. But I think his best shot is to take both pieces. Yes, nice shot. And the ball got the seven pin. Nice shot. Where's the ball now on the deflection? You're right. Pretty sharp eyes, Doug. <laughs> Make a good umpire. <laughs> oh. No thanks. <laughs> Same shot that Billy just converted for his last mark, three, six, and ten. And he's, oh boy. Sharp break at the end, cost him the mark. Good, good cover for the ten. Brooklyn side, leaving the 10 pin. Let's see go. where that wood goes. Well, it'll give him a nice yeah. guide. It's the first time in two weeks he's hit the one-two pocket and got a fairly good break on it. And he covers for the spare. And he's a little pumped up this week. He's got off to a much better start, obviously, than he did last week. Working on a spare for... Scott. Boy, that was a great looking throw. He just put that down right where he wanted it. Nice follow through. Big nine fill on the spare. When the timing and everything is in sync, boy, it's, mm. it's really a picture to see the ball go in there and the pins fly. That time just missing to the right. Nice ball there. One ball too late. Another good looking ball. And another nine drop. Hard <laughs> to believe. Scott's shaking his head. He has room to get by for the eight pin. Uh oh. Mm -mm. oh he looked like he actually came up with a shot as he released that, pulled it to the left, and hit that piece of wood, which he tried to stay away from. Still there for a 119. Good six, fills. Six pins higher than his average. Nine fill on all three marks. Fortunately, the, that means he must have missed two singles for spares. That's an eight fill for Bill. And double wood. And oh. he missed it. Well, Bill will have a lead after one string, and his lead will be built in this 10th frame. A little bit short on that one. One, two, four, six, ten. Right side, have the ball go down, or split the one, two, have the head pin go down. And the lead will be seven. 126 for Bill Koppold to 119 for Scott Richardson, and the difference is seven. The middle string is upcoming, as is the address for your postcards for the bonus ball contest. Don't go away. All right, Bill Koffold set to go and lead us off here in the middle string. <laughs> Enjoying the action. Let's see Bill on that shot. We started the ball way out to the right. That time a little too far. Never came back quite enough for him, leaving the one and the two. I will say that uh, uh, mom knew where to sit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or 
auntie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I suppose we should cover it. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Bill Coffold starts with a 10. Don't forget, two weeks from today, Sunday, April 5th, we will begin a new ladder championship here on Stars and Strikes, and it will be the Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship, and we're really looking forward to that one. All of the bowlers, by the way, who've been with us since the season began back in October will be eligible for that show so we could get some big names in on that particular that, ladder. And that's a scotch doubles format where each bowler will bowl two boxes for example the, the man will start off bowl the first and second and the woman partner would bowl the third and the fourth and so on each would fill each other's marks if they were up on the even box, and except for the last one, the bowler up there would finish. But uh, a little interesting format, mixed doubles, scotch doubles, a lot of fun. And incidentally, the bowlers will qualify individually, not as teams. There'll be a separate, there has been, I should say, a separate roll-off for men and for women. And uh, as we're talking to you now, the roll-offs have already been held, but we do not know whom the winners are yet, so each bowler will qualify on an individual basis and then they will be paired up according to their order of finish. The top six men and the top, top six women will be paired up uh, number one with number six, number two with number five, and so on. And uh, then the roll-off scores will be combined and it will be the combined roll-off scores that will count for the final seedings. This could be a strike and it is. Scott Richardson patient, and it paid off with a strike. So the uh, the roll-offs will be held as if it were a singles competition, but in fact it will be doubles. And there you saw the proof that the <laughs> the two pin did in fact go down for a strike. crossing over that one-two pocket and it's doesn't usually carry the pins as well but he's got a makeable shot here the three six with the seven piece of wood in back of the three and the six looks like if he's on the three should cover the shot oh nice very shot. nice nice shot nicely done for Bill Coffold his fifth mark and worth another look you see, no problem. Use that wood effectively and just clipping that seven pin as it goes into the pit. Nice shot by Billy Coffold. Scott Richardson on a strike oh, and he's got a double. double. Oh. There you see, looked like he was going to have the four six left there for a minute. The four went down, then the six looking for three in a row. Full. Five and a six. Disappointing for Scott. Trying to grab two for the eight box now. And oh boy, mm. six. How quickly things can turn. We will take a break right here. Scott Richardson, 56 through four. He has taken the lead from Bill Coffold, but Bill will be working on a spare. When we come back, don't go away. All right, Bill Coffold to fill in his spare in the fourth. Oh, disappointing two. Uh, 
That puts him down by eight. Double strike of Scott. Got him back in a hurry. Six pin. Waiting a long time for that wood to come to rest. Oh, he's going to have a clean shot at it. But remember that brake he has. His brake's real sharp. You're going to really have to use some speed to straighten it out. Anything left on that left side. Got it. Nice shot. Scott Richardson. Shooting at the two five seven. Four pin. Boy, he gets that ball in that one three pocket, and those pins fly. Oh, he has trouble with his singles, though. By the way, Dan, did we ever mail that letter to Dennis Connor to ask him why he didn't? Name is 12 meters stars and strikes instead of stars and stripes. Uh, no, but he will be hearing from us. Yes. Oh, nice try by Bill. Wow. He used all of the lane. He certainly did. <laughs> This match is dead even right now through completed boxes. Well, the Gillis party. Come to the car, please, Gillis. Bill coming up short of the head pin, but it won't turn out so badly after all. The one, four, seven with wood in between. Nice piece of wood behind the head pin. Just a matter of whether that second piece that's resting against the four and seven is going to hurt the shot or not. Bill's taking some extra time. The wood's not moving, but he's just studying it. Right nice. on it. Nice shot. Again, right in the 1-3 pocket. 4-8. That wood to get out of the way. Well, well if this was Ron Root, he'd be directing that piece of wood right into the channel on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Ron was funny the last few weeks directing that wood to where he wanted it. Oh, oh. nice, fine shot. Terrific shot. Yep. That's Scott's third spare to go along with three strikes. Just catches it. Up high in the wood, pushes it back into the four and eight. Fine shot. And another big fill with a spare leave on the 6-10. As Scott retakes the lead in the match. And another one. Back and forth we go. 
been like this the last few weeks. Going right down to the last box, the last two weeks. Well, now Bill's got to escape here. And he'll take a six box. As you can see, tough fills for Bill this game. Two, seven, five. Hasn't been able to put anything together. Now he'll have another spare leave on the nine pin. He's going to have a clear shot at Trying to make that nine pin. It looks good. Nice shot. That could be a big mark because uh, Scott still has room for a couple more and he will have the lead already. Well, can't be any bigger than that. That's a real big mark now. That's the way to do it, especially in the 10th box. No chance for the 8-pin. So now Scott Richardson working on his second spare oh in a row, and wow. <laughs> so when you think one bowler is going to take a little bit of a commanding lead, he comes right back with a poor fill. Nice try there. Well, through the ninth, Scott Richardson leads in the match by 10, but he's opposite 20 so here in the final box. He gets a 10 box. We're all even after two. Well, nope, he'll have to show us one. The one, two, four, and 10. No wood. Well, if you can... Corral these two are dead even. And he does. There it is. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I don't know why we're even bothering with the first two strings. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Comes down to the last box anyway. We are dead even after two strings here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Ten boxes to the finish. We'll be back. Don't go away. Well, you know, the bowlers are under pressure, and so is Carol Downey. And oh, we just wanted to verify that we do have a, an even tie here after two strings, 243 apiece. So we'll settle it all right here in the third string, and Scott Richardson will start us off on lane 32. We really should bail her out. It was really our fault. We didn't get our four fingers up in time <laughs> <laughs> so she could see him. <laughs> Well, you said it, down to 10 boxes. One string match now. Ooh, oh. almost. Just slid by that seven. I'll tell you, I haven't remembered as many exciting matches in a row as we had the last two weeks. The scores haven't been really high, but uh, certainly not lacking for excitement. Each bowler with seven marks coming into this third string. Ooh. Although Scott has three strikes among his seven. Bill Coffold only has one. Uh, make it two. Here's another one. And make it four for Scott Richardson. One three pocket, that's his. Seven, eight, and ten, the last three to go down. Bill Coffold actually had nine marks through the first two strings, not seven. One, two, and four. Yes, yes off the wall. And that puts him in the lead by one because he's opposite a nine, but now he's going to face the strike of Scott Richardson. 
No, he'll mix here a little bit for a seven fill. Two, two seven and ten. And he's gonna have to do it all on his own. I think he's much help there. With the, well, let's see what that wood's gonna do. May go up and rest against the seven pin. Now it's still gonna have to cut the two pin on the left hand side, I believe. We have again uh, it'll stay in between. It's not yeah, frozen yeah. on the seven pin, though. May we have the Fisher party, please. Fisher. Oh, Bill just wanted to get the wood out of the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. set it up for a good ten. <laughs> <laughs> and eight. So, six fill will knot it back up again. Anything over six, Scott takes the lead. Lead is two, and then a ten box added on for Scott. part of the huge crowd that's here for this match. It's only a small portion of it. A lot of it's to the, to the left of the camera. Uh, well, to our right, off camera. Big crowd. break with the 10 pin gone down. Look like a little better hit than the result he was left with here. Two, four, five, seven, and eight. Converts for a spare. <laughs> back and forth we go. Anything over two, he'll take the lead back. Make it five, make it six pins, the lead. And another spare leave with room between the woods. And it's going to be delicate shot. He can get by the front piece of wood to clip the five and the eight, but it's going to be a tough shot. Especially at the angle he throws oh, the ball, boy. and yes. that was the difference. You're right. You're absolutely right, Doug, and just broke a last minute. I thought he might cover it, but... Well, we will pause right here. Bill Coffold has the lead by six, and we have six frames remaining. The winner to move on to the ladder championship match next week. We'll be back. Scott Richardson for the fifth box in the third and final string. Six pins, not very many. As you know, that's just one mark. Time to keep the lead under uh, single digits. One ball could be the match. Interesting in these matches, because the, ex well, I should say, inexperience of television work for these bowlers. Interesting, get down to the, those final few frames. Squeeze the ball a little tighter. Palm gets a little sweatier, and nails get a little shorter. Wow! Almost shook him down for a strike. Hair gets a little grayer. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think that's quite enough. <laughs> Three pin. Well, I'll tell you, this concentration. A ball came off the ball return. It was coming up the channel of the lane next to him. <laughs> Didn't phase him at all. Still got the single for the spare. <laughs> Thought the pins were throwing the balls back at him. 
Bill Coffold coming up short. And he got a pretty good break, considering. He's the one with a six-pin lead. He's opposite a nine and then a spare by Scott Richardson. One, two, six, and ten. Inside or out. Right-hand side of the head pin. The ball got a good chance of clearing the six and ten or splitting the one, two, and have the head pin go down there. It's a split. Nice Dang. shot. Wow. Again, missing the head pin. One, three, six with a seven. Six fill. Increases his lead to 13, but he's opposite a spare. Not Almost. this time. Almost. Remember, next week, the ladder championship match, the winner of this one, will face Dean DeRocher of Manchester. And then in two weeks, we will begin the Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship. Right here on Stars and Strikes. 13 pin deficit for this gentleman right here, but he's on a spare. He punched, and he'll take six. Well, he's got to go at the six and the ten. Grab both pieces of wood if he can. Get some flying towards that seven pin. Oh, nah, he wanted to catch that other piece. I think it was the, the one most likely to come off the sidewall toward the seven pin. No, that's a nine. Well, Scott's in the same situation he was in last time he was up there. That'll be a nine. Carroll getting the correction now. Scott was open on lane 32 last time and came up with a big mark over here on lane 31. He really needs to do the same thing now. One, three, six, seven, no. Advantage Cuffold here. And Billy's opposite, two opens. Big break right now for Billy Cuffold if he can put one. Abraham definitely can put two up. Oh, this is a good ball. Everything but the eight pin. That, that doesn't look like a pencil down there to him. <laughs> He's got a piece of wood rolling over Ooh, to it, though, and oh boy. now it's much easier. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was right on it. Well, that's only the mark. Now comes the most important part. He gains another pin in count, so he's up eight, plus the fill. Pulled the ball to the left at six, got seven. No, at six. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That'd be a big pin. <laughs> Move the head pin off the spot. It also may wreck this shot. I think it did. I think you're right, Doug. Well, so who knows how many it might have cost him. Grab another one and count here because he's opposite an eight. Oh, what a ten. Nice ten. Game two. Sixteen pins. There you see the 10. Use the wood effectively in front of the 9, next to the 9, into the 8. And Scott has got to come up with a couple marks. 16 pins behind. And how about this? This goes 1. Hasn't made it yet, but it's certainly looking good. Oh, wow. 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 Anytime you got two pieces of wood that are going to come in contact with each other before it hits the pin, always runs a chance of that happening. And I thought surely he would have covered it, though. And that was a big one. Now he needs a double strike to force uh, Billy Koffold to at least pin the last two frames. And that'll do it. Well he gets a spare and a strike and Billy would have to still have to get a few pins but that'll do it 
Billy Koff will just have to keep it on the lane. On the ninth box. Pretty exciting match, though, right down to the last few frames. It's a 106 for Scott Richardson and 359. But Bill Koffold only needs three pins to win. And there it is. So now he can relax and enjoy these last two boxes. Probably the most enjoyable two boxes of the match for him. <laughs> His most enjoyable two boxes in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, this is a fellow who's won two in a row now, and last week he won 14 frames before he got his first mark. But he's made up for it this week. That was mark number 15 today. 13 of them spares. Three seventy-five and a ball. And it'll be seven more for a 139. Good hand for both of our bowlers, and the scores will go up on the board that way. 382 for Bill Koffold, 349 for Scott Richardson, and we will be back to talk to both bowlers and put $30 on the line in the bonus ball contest after these messages. Don't go away. Once again, the final count, 382 to 359, and let's meet both of our bowlers now. First of all, a round of applause for Scott Richardson. Come on up, Scott. Well, it was, uh, it was close right to the end, and uh, boy, that, that third string uh, made the difference. Bill kind of caught fire there on the end, at the end. Yeah, he did. I missed way too many single pins, and you can't do that against a good bowler like Bill. Still though, 359, a good, uh, good showing for you on your first time with us. We have uh, some things to give you. We have a check for uh, $100 and, of course, the, uh, the book by Jim Fairhurst and the runner-up trophy, and uh, we hope to see you again real soon. Thanks for coming by, Thank Scott. Thank you very much, Doug. All right, Scott Richardson from Nashua, our runner-up today. And uh, now it's time to see if we can give away some money in our bonus ball contest. And a quick reminder before we have Bill roll the ball that if you don't have your postcards in, please send them in. Send your name, address, and a number from 1 to 10 and mail them in to Sandy's Bowling Lanes. There you go, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And of course, the number of pins, your guess from one to 10, should be the number of pins you think will be dropped on the bonus ball, which is rolled at the end of every show. If the numbers match, you win whatever's accumulated in the jackpot. If not, you get a TV50 NHCBA desk pen. Right now, we have $30 on the line, and Bill Koffel is set to uh, see if he can give us a match here. And uh, we will be shooting for $30 this week. And here we go. And it's going to be seven. So let's see. I, I think so. I think so too. Dan said it's a winner, and it is a winner, in fact. Do you know Pauline Mooney by any chance? <laughs> Pauline Mooney from Manchester. You've just won $30 from Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It'll be in the mail shortly, and we'll, of course, recycle the uh, jackpot down to $10 next week. Bill, come on in here so everybody can see it, and uh, another, just another easy one for you. Yeah, it was a <laughs> <laughs> felt a lot better this week than last week. Uh, the ball was going for me, and pins were falling, so... You're saying those last those last two boxes were probably the first two you've been able to relax. Box. They yeah. were so easy. I think <laughs> <laughs> they were my best. So, all right. Next week, uh, Dean DeRocher, who's been waiting, of course, as the number one seed, uh, will come in. Uh, have you bowled against Dean before? I've bowled next to him, but <laughs> not against him. So, we should have fun. All right. We'll be looking forward to that ladder championship for the big money next week. All right. So will I. <laughs> all right. Bill Coffold with his second win in a row, and uh, that sets it up for next week. Dan Murphy. It'll be uh, the number three seed, Bill Coffold against the number one seed, Dean DeRocher. Well, it's be interesting to see. Again, Dean uh, was a little stranger to the lights and cameras, uh, as was Bill a few weeks ago. And as a fellow has won two in a row now and took him 14 frames to get that first mark two weeks <laughs> ago. And boy, he's come a long ways. And he bowled a lot better today, a little more confidence. So be interesting to see uh, how long it takes Dean to get on track next week. All right, that'll about wrap it up for this edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Once again, we invite you to join us uh, next Sunday at 12 noon with, of course, the repeat at uh, Saturday at 5 o'clock. And that'll be the ladder championship match next week between our number one seed, Dean DeRocher, and our number three seed, Bill Coffold. Until then, for the whole TV50 Sports crew and my partner Dan Murphy, Doug Brown, saying so long from Sandy's. Yeah.